Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Playtech TV. My name is Kevin and today we're checking out the Corsair Sabre RGB gaming mouse. So let's dive straight in with the specs. And as you can see, there's two in front of me. And now they're exactly the same except for the sensors. So this one right here comes with an 8200 DPI laser sensor. And this one right here comes with a 6400 optical sensor, the same one as found in the very popular Razer Death Adder. Now it's very lightweight, these Sabres. They're only coming in at 100 grams total weight. So very lightweight, very responsive. However, they don't come with you know additional weight, so you can't make it heavier if it's too light for you. So that might be a letdown for some people. Now it has four zones, 16.8 million color backlighting, which we'll talk about a bit later. A multicolor DPI indicator on the side, which is really handy. I really like when they do this. Um, so it comes with five presets from default. So you can just set it to five different DPI settings. I left it on the uh, fourth one, which I believe is about 3000 DPI. Um, so that's really cool. I, I really like that feature and a lot of gaming mice do that. Um, having five presets is also really handy. So that's a really nice touch. Now, it also has eight programmable buttons high performance switches, which we will talk about a bit later, but they were quite impressive. A comfortable claw grip design. Now, of course they're saying it's a claw grip design, but honestly, I think if you have uh, smaller hands, you'll probably like it in a palm grip. Um, it's kind of, it's a hybrid, I think, as far as it goes. You can use it with a claw grip, you can use, you can use it with a palm grip, and it's just fine, honestly. It's not that specified. So, um, a bit funny that they've said that, but uh, overall, I just think it's more of a hybrid mouse. You can get away with both grip types. It just depends more on the size of your hand. Now, it says a 1000 hertz polling rate, a braided cable, and dimensions-wise, it's coming in at 124 millimeters long, by 80 millimeters wide, by 38 millimeters tall. Moving on now to the looks. And honestly, I think it's very neutral looking. It's not too basic and it's not too fancy. So this is a good balance and it's obviously going to appeal to both crowds. Those wanting a more subtle looking gaming mouse, but also those that like a more aggressive looking gaming mouse. Um, the lighting is also quite good, but it's a little bit limited. We'll get to that a bit later on. And at the base, it looks a slightly bit too wide for my taste. But overall, looks-wise, I think it's really good. Very balanced-looking gaming mouse. Now, comfort. There are no complaints here. It was very, very comfortable, both in a palm grip and a claw grip. But as I said earlier, it really depends on the size of your hand. So even after hours of gaming, it still felt very comfortable. I wasn't getting any pain in my wrists or anything like that. Um, it's very grippy, especially on the sides. Because of its light weight, it also means you don't fatigue as much. If you like to run more lower G DPI settings and move the mouse around a lot, it's going to be better for those people. As I said earlier, you can't add more weight to it, which is going to be an issue for some people. I don't actually have a problem with it. I think it's a pretty good weight how it comes straight out of the box. So yeah, uh, comfort wise, very good, very light. Um, it should generally be good for most people and a safe bet when it comes to comfort. Now moving on to accuracy and sensitivity, talking about the sensors now. So both sensors, the laser and the optical, were absolutely fantastic. Now the main benefit of the laser sensor is that it's going to work more solidly on any surface. So if you're going to buy a gaming mouse to use, say with your gaming laptop for example, and you're going to be taking it around with you and gaming on all different types of surfaces, uh, then the laser sensor will probably suit you a bit better. The optical sensor has the main benefit of working really solidly on something like a quality mouse pad. But honestly, even in saying that, uh, I used both of these back to back and I didn't notice that much difference between them, honestly. So there's not that much difference. However, the sensors were just fantastic. Really good quality, really accurate. Um, the sensitivity uh, from the presets was also really good as well, but you can customize it, which we'll be talking about a bit later. They're just a really solid all-round sensor in both of these. Just absolutely fantastic, and I guarantee that the majority of you will think it's really, really good. Moving on now to buttons and the scroll wheel. And the button placement was really solid, especially on the forward and back buttons and the DPI adjustment buttons. They were really natural to use. They're out of the way, so you don't accidentally misclick them. And overall, it was just really good placement, and I really liked it. Now, the scroll wheel was also very solid. It's really refreshing to use a scroll wheel 
that gives good feedback but isn't too stiff. It also has an unbound button behind it which you can set to do whatever you like. Now the main right and left click buttons were also very good. They're not the best I've ever used but they're definitely uh, far above average. They have good feedback, good travel, so you're not accidentally going to uh, misclick, which gives you confidence when using it. And they're also decently wide, which is good for people with bigger hands like me. If I had to sum up the Corsair Sabre's RGB lighting in one word, I would say limited. The only things that light up is the Corsair logo at the back, the scroll wheel, some LEDs in the front, and the DPI indicator, which you can change and set up how you want. Mixed with the complicated software it comes with, it just means the lighting isn't that good, there's not enough of it, it doesn't go very bright. So yeah, as far as lighting goes, it's pretty limited. Let's talk now about some of the additional features which come with the Corsair Sabre RGB. Starting with Corsair Q, their software. Now, it's still the worst point of the Corsair experience. Now, it does have lots of customizability, especially in setting up the button functions, the macros, and setting the different DPI settings. It's all super straightforward. However, setting up the RGB lighting is absolutely unbearable unless you watch about six of the videos explaining how to use it or read the 140-page manual. I cannot believe how overly complicated it is. Even just selecting a custom color is difficult. This is still by far the worst peripheral software I have ever used, even though it is the most customizable. It's just purely because it isn't straightforward and it isn't intuitive. You really would need to watch a guide in order to use it properly. And just trying to set up a custom color quickly or just a quick lighting effect is really difficult and it's just overall, it's just unintuitive and too complicated. Thankfully though, software can always be updated. Although I have been waiting for a while now for Corsair to update it and improve it and I haven't noticed any improvements yet. But hopefully they fix this further down the road. In conclusion, this is a super solid gaming mouse in every sense, except maybe slightly in terms of lighting and majorly in terms of software. So it has balanced looks, weight and size mixed in with good ergonomics to create an interesting yet subtle but comfortable gaming mouse. With the addition of two excellent sensors for consumers to pick from that are surely not going to disappoint anybody, it seemed like the Corsair Sabre RGB was going to be a great solid all-rounder, and it still is if you can ignore the lighting and the software. So if those don't matter to you, then I can 100% recommend it to the majority of consumers as a safe bet when it comes to a high-end gaming mouse. But the limited lighting mixed with the horrible software that really lets the side down will be annoying for those people looking for an easy to set up RGB mouse that will go with the theme of their gaming setup. But as I said, the limitations on the lighting are only really a minor issue and the software can be improved over time, which means that those things aren't really going to be too much of an issue, hopefully further down the road. Now I hope you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Playtech TV if you haven't already, like the video if you liked it, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.